And I got to ask, what was the journey like? And why did you leave out the boys, Dr. Evans? <laughs> well, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, gender dysphoria. Uh, we, <laughs> we, we, we Anthony were, was there. Well, Anthony was there. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I had one of my sons there. Okay. 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 Uh, we, um, and he narrates. He narrates some in the film. So yes. he's, he's present he's, there. Yeah. So <laughs> it wasn't, we didn't, we didn't totally leave them out. But the girls dominated. They did dominate. But it was a great family event. It would be the last event my wife would be with us at before she you know, transitioned to glory. But it was a special time to be where Jesus was born, raised, and where he demonstrated his humanity alongside of his deity and to be able to minister to the people who went and then to capture it so that we could do this documentary for people who have never been or who want to be renewed uh, is a great experience. So we, we praise God for the opportunity to, 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 to do this documentary, Journey with Jesus. Well, it was so much fun. It looked like it's a lot of fun. What was it like preaching there, Dr. Evans? Because there you were in full Dr. Evans-like mode here. What was that like? Well, it's a different level of inspiration because you're now not just preaching from the text alone, you're preaching from the text from the sight. Yeah. And when those two come together, you feel a new level of energy, a new level of relevancy, a new level of uh, inspiration uh, when you can point to and reference right there what you're talking about from scripture. Now, Priscilla, I got to ask you this, because it seemed like you had a lot of fun, like you were taking it all in. What was it like to work with your dad on this project? Well, I always love working with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> it gives me a chance to sort of, you know, hang out with him, make jokes with him. I mean, oh, my goodness, we had so many funny times where we just were starting to, you know, crack up either because we were so tired from the early mornings and late nights, um, but then getting to have a front row seat to hearing him, um, the scholar that he is in regards to theology and scripture, and then bring that, contextualize that with where we were standing in different parts of Israel. Um, it was just as a student of scripture and as, um, you know, he's my pastor as well as my dad. So having just that front row seat to hear him explain the scriptures and to do that while we're in the context of the land of the Bible is incredibly memorable and something that I'm incredibly grateful for. Hmm. Priscilla, when, when, when you got back on the plane to come back home, what did you think to yourself about the trip? Like, what was going through your mind? Probably you were tired, obviously, yeah. in jet lag, <laughs> but what were you thinking at that time? I was just thinking, wow, wow, what a gift that we not only got to go to Israel, but we got to go to Israel with our family. Um, it is such a remarkable experience, period. But to be able to do it with my siblings and to be able to do it with my dad and mom, it's just one of those lifetime, you know, things that you kind of look back on and go, wow, I'm so grateful to the Lord for giving us the opportunity. And as dad said, we didn't know then, but in hindsight, I have so much gratitude now that the Lord gave us that trip with our mother, because that was really the last trip that we got to take with our mom. So um, in hindsight, I feel intense gratitude that the Lord allowed that. I just love how God is always working behind the scenes. Yeah. And we don't don't know it. Dr. Evans, I got to ask you this question is one that I wanted to ask you earlier. When did you know that you had to do this project? Like, when did you say, okay, this one's for me and I'm going to bring along the kids with me? <laughs> well, the kids were planning to go with us just with our ministry friends. It was just started out as a ministry trip with the Urban Alternative. And so we had 700 people who are supporters and friends of the ministry. And the family was going to just go as part of being together as a family with our ministry friends. But when we talked to our ministry team at the Urban Alternative, they said, well, let's capture this because this could become a Bible study. Well, as we were capturing it with a Bible study in mind, we saw that it could be used even greater to bless more people and to give more people the opportunity to uh, experience Israel with us. So it was kind of a, a growth kind of situation as it unfolded. When you look back at the trip, Dr. Evans, you've been there before, you studied the Bible better than anybody else that I know of. What did God teach you in that experience? Well, what what I experienced in this trip was 
every time I go to Israel, there's a deeper layer of understanding that I come into contact with, that I come to understand. So God in letting me see some places I'd seen before, but layer it at a deeper level. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I talk about the fact that uh, the, the shepherd showed up at Jesus's birth in Bethlehem, but uh, and that the shepherds were not just general shepherds for sheep, but they were shepherds for sheep that were being prepared for slaughter. So yeah. when they show up and Jesus is called the Lamb of God, that's an appropriate, deeper understanding of shepherds showing up. So I mean, there, there are nuances and nooks and crannies that keep, keep impacting you at, at a deeper level of understanding. Even you, as a great Bible teacher that you are, that's amazing to me to hear you say that. I got. I love you. talking to you. You make me feel so good about me. <laughs> I appreciate that. No, you are. I mean, I, I got to tell you, I love your work. And speaking of your work, the new book, it came in uh, a couple days ago, and my wife stole it, Priscilla. And so I was looking around for this book yesterday going where is this? So I had to call her. She goes, oh, it's in it's in the study. Um, so she's already read through half of it. So she felt like she would give me the notes on it. So I got to ask this question, though. What was it like working together on this project? And when the whole family hit send to send it off to Thomas Nelson, what did you guys think? Well, our um, my brother Anthony was the really the spearhead for this project. And he was just masterful in, in drawing out of all of us in conversation, these layers of thought, of emotion, of uh, what we were thinking at different times. We pulled from our journal entries, what we had written down at different points during what had been a very, very difficult and traumatic, honestly, two and a half years of, of loss, um, one after the other and difficulty. And we know many people's story is that way. So our brother really took the time to dive into our thoughts with that, to have us to expound on things we had written, um, but wanted to just flesh out more. And then weaving that all together, as you see in the book there, it's just kind of conversational style where we're talking to each other and um, allowing people to really see five different perspectives um, as we wrestled with our faith, as we wrestled with disappointment, discouragement, and ask the real questions that human beings ask when we go through hard stuff. Nobody's immune to that, but how we're able to hold on to faith and really be anchored by the hope that we have in Jesus. It's not just a cliche. It's not just something we're saying in theory. We're saying we have found out through the past two years what it means to be anchored by the hope that the Holy Spirit gives us in Jesus Christ, even when life is turned upside down. So our hope is that this book will offer people not just insight into our experience, that's sort yeah. of a surface level. It's to draw you, the reader, into understanding that it is possible to remain upright and hope-filled even when life breaks your heart. You know, so I gotta tell you, there's, there's a part in the book, I don't wanna give away the whole book here, where you're talking about when you walk into your dad's room, hotel room there, the NRB, and you find out about your mom. And I almost lost it at that point in the book, so to be honest with you, yeah. Can you walk me through, like, how has your faith sustained you during this season? Well, I, I will say there's there are many different things, ways that I could answer that. Some is just the encouragement of some brothers and sisters in Christ, friends that I've had for a long time, some older women in the faith who have made it their business to be overtly encouraging to me and to all of us. Um, but but honestly, it's the faith of my own mother that really encouraged mine because here's my mom going through what is, you know, probably the toughest year of her life after receiving this diagnosis that hurt that she had a cancer that really they couldn't do anything about. And she went through about nine months that we did everything we could really to try to figure out a way to hopefully push this back and, and prayerful about it, asking the Lord to do a miracle because the doctors had been very clear it was going to require a miracle. They could do everything they could to slow it down, but they knew that there wasn't anything medically that they could that they could assure us would take care of this. Mm -hmm. So we watched people praying all over the world and the country and um, for her. Um, and as we went through that year, my mother remained incredibly hopeful, even as her body began to get frail. Um, as she came to the last couple of months of her life, I think she's starting to maybe get a little clarity that God was going to heal her in heaven and not here on earth. And even with that in mind, even as she wrestled with hard questions, I remember her asking my dad some hard questions just about the reality of death. And he did his best to kind of stumble through 
what answers he knew from scripture about to be absent with the body is being present with the Lord. There were lots of tears shed amongst us, lots of discouragement. And yet my mother, despite the discouragement and the real tears, my mom was hope filled to the end. She wanted to see Jesus. She had faith. She believed God. She was anchored. So if the Holy Spirit is powerful enough to anchor her in the midst of what she was going through and her body failing her, um, then that inspired me and all of us that that same kind of grace and goodness and strength and faith that was available to her is also available to us. You know, Dr. Evans, I interviewed Philip Yancey last week and, and, and he mentioned you, by the way, and just hearing your story about here in Atlanta was powerful. Um, where I live at right now. And I was in the midst of writing about you in the Howard Hendricks book, to be fair. And I literally had to go back and rewrite that chapter. Just because <laughs> I thought, man, this guy has been through a lot, man. Um, how have you been such, and I, I'm just going to be blunt when I say this, you have set the bar high for the rest of us. How have you been able to do that? And I, and I mean that in such a way where I would have given up. I'd said, I'm out of here. <laughs> you have stayed the course though. How? Well, the, 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 you know, you, you, there comes times in your life where you have to decide you believe what you say and mm -hmm. believe what you preach. And when those times come and you're pressed up against the wall, which way, where are you going to run? Which direction are you going to go in? And so while we all, you know, fall short of where we should be, uh, I believe that the Bible is the inerrant word of God, that Jesus Christ is all that he's declared to be in scripture and his promises are true. And sometimes you have to trust God in the dark. And so we, and sometimes that doesn't, your emotions won't help you do that. That becomes your decision. And so trying to keep making that decision through the ups and downs of life is where the, is where the challenge is. It's also where the spiritual opportunity is. Well, I got to tell you, this has been a clear honor for me. Thank you so much. We hope people check out the document, documentary. It's going to be um, the 15th, 16th, and 17th next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And they can get their tickets on uh, journeywithjesusmovie.com. Just put in your zip code. It'll tell you where the movie's playing near you. You know, when our book comes out, can you follow me around too, please? Because you're the best. I think it's Dr. Evans and Closer. <laughs> you're like, good. <laughs> I will be there. I can't uh, wait to see the full thing. And the book, I tell everybody too, is incredible. You guys are great. Priscilla, thank you as well. Dr. Evans, have a great afternoon. I appreciate you. you. Have a good one. Enjoy all of this. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Take care.